Well, the last Fantasy Armors or Fantasy Knights episode on this channel got a good enough response from all of you to justify doing a sequel. Maybe even more than one sequel. In that episode, I'd floated a few ideas for what I could do with a follow-up episode, but the one I felt I had the best ideas around was doing fictional elements as armors. So taking things like adamantium, which Wolverine's claws are made out of, or kyber, the crystal inside lightsabers. So, that's what we're doing today. But if you do have ideas for future armor episodes, leave them in the comments, because I am hoping to do a third episode of this, and who knows, your suggestion could be that third episode. But for now, let's go. Hit like! If you want, subscribe, if you feel like. But either way, enjoy the show. Ah, so it seems you could not stay away from my shop and my beautiful armors. I can't say I blame you. Welcome back to Vasilia Kuznet's glorious establishment. That is me, by the way, in case you forgot. Now I know last time I spoke your ear off for quite some time about past armors that I'd made, and I assume you're back specifically for more stories, yes? As you decide what armor you might like to buy, of course. That, that one would look quite nice on you, yes? Anyway, let me tell you about four more. These ones much more unusual than the armors I designed for the elementals, as I told you about last time. See, most of the materials I worked with for these next four armors were completely foreign to me. I'd only heard of one of them and never worked with any of them before. The most bizarre one was possibly that which was brought in by a young woman. She had a wagon full of glowing purple cubes. She said she had no idea what they were, but that they'd been left behind by giant metal men from space. Now remember, this is not my claim. I am open-minded person, yes, but also skeptical of her tale. She also claimed one of these metal men was over 300 feet tall and could transform its body into a big dinosaur and that it fought two others that could turn into different monsters. Where she claimed to have witnessed this occurrence, there are also many mushroom groves nearby, so I think I have better idea of what really happened. Regardless, she had materials and gold to pay for it to be forged, so I got down to work. The substance proved to be very difficult to work with at first, as it easily changed state from solid to gas to crystal form. It also proved to be very explosive, but eventually I used this to the armor's advantage. I had to incorporate some other materials and use some magic to stabilize it, but eventually it was quite malleable. Now, because she claims this material came from transforming metal men, I was somewhat inspired to give her a weapon that also transformed. You see, I made her long tube with blade running along one side, and seemed to have large club at the end. But, inside the tube hides a chain attached to the club. When she presses a switch on the weapon, Chainball lords and becomes mace, much better for using against foes that are slightly farther away. Perfect for unsuspecting attacks in battle against, well, whoever it is this unusual woman wanted to fight. But that is not all I did with the weapon. Since the material was inherently explosive, while I did manage to work that out of the material on her person, I enchanted the purple material on the mace so that when it strikes it has extra explosive power behind every hit. I wish she'd found more of this material so I could work with it again. I have asked a goodly friend of mine if he has ever come across this material, but he says no. Still, I treasure the time I got to spend working with the strange, allegedly spaceman element. Now the next one was one of my proudest armors, but not one of my proudest sails. You see, I found things out about the man who commissioned the suit some time later and realized I should not have built him this armor, given what he planned to do with it. He came to me claiming to be a wizard himself, which I did not believe at first, as he was bald. Not that a bald man cannot do magic, but who's ever heard of a bald wizard before? Wizards have long flowing beards and long hair. I mean, I suppose I am somewhat of a wizard, and I have no beard, but I am also a woman. Woman wizards don't have beards, do they? I have no judgments to any who do, but I'm getting sidetracked. The man's name was Lutharios. I still do not know if this was first name, or last name, or made up name, could be any, who's to say? He proved to me he was indeed a wizard, then gave me a material he needed to have a professional manufacture into an armor for him. 
He claimed it was very specially enchanted material made to kill a specific type of creature. When I asked what creature it was, he was quite vague about it. But I was younger and more foolish then and just trusted he was after a dangerous and violent beast. I made the suit exactly as he wanted, big and muscular, covered in shards of the magical rock he'd given me. He himself was not a big man, but he wanted very big armor. I get this request a lot, small men wanting big suits, so it did not throw me off. I believe they are compensating. I tell you though, when small man asks for small suit, this is men I like, men of confidence, self-assurance. Sometimes I give discounts, but most times no. Anyway, I also made him very large weapon, because as you might have guessed, small man wanted big weapon as well. I made the battle axe larger than his entire body, and the blade was made from the enchanted rock. I also added lots of purple to the design. I was not sure he'd approve, as men who want to look tough often don't like flashy colors. But I did anyway, and he did not protest. So, win for me, and win for the eyes of all who see him in this armor. It did look much better with color. A week later, he returned for the suit, paid, and did not thank me for my work, which is fine, I was doing job, just seems a bit rude. Then he left. But a few weeks later I was told that someone in an armor fitting the description of the one I'd made for Insecure Man had almost successfully slain a superior Sky Dragon. Of all the dragons he could have been hunting, why a superior Sky Dragon? They provide hope to so many people. They are the most peaceful and powerful creatures in the sky. But maybe that is it. Insecure Man wanted to prove his manliness by killing unkillable dragon. Is sad, but I suppose is what happened. I can think of no other reason why anyone would want to kill Superior Sky Dragon. Though I must also add, it's quite impressive that the material he created was capable of hurting this dragon. He certainly should not be insecure about his magic. Bald or not, he is certainly a very powerful wizard. Next armor I designed was for a woman who had already slain quite a number of dragons. She even claimed to have killed one that I did not think could be killed. She brought with her to my shop the entire skeleton of a great Canadian terror claw. Maybe she killed it, maybe she found skeleton of one that died of old age. I don't know, but either way, I was very excited to work with this material as the great Canadian terror claw skeleton is coated in a biological metal so durable that it's thought to be unbreakable. At this time, I'd never had to melt down a material of this strength, so it took some tampering with different spells. I was middle tier magic user at the time, so this was difficult, but eventually I found the right combination of enchantment and heat to properly melt the metal. This process also proved quite useful for me years later when I needed to work with the hide of an American shielded wyvern, as their wings are arguably as strong as the bones of a terror claw. Now, lady who brought in skeleton seemed quite aggressive. I would categorize her as very pointy lady. She even had some very pointy sharp teeth like vampire, so I ask her, are you vampire? She says, no. I say, you know if you're vampire, legally you have to tell me you're vampire. She says, I think you just made that up, but also no, I am not vampire. I say, hmm, okay, either way I will make you suit, maybe vampire lady, just don't eat my blood. She was quite angry after that, but still bought suit, so is okay. Anyway, I made pointy lady a very pointy suit. I also gave her claws inspired by the very creature whose skeleton provided the metal. Though I did make them too big, these claws, and only had room for two on each arm. I added another one to the foot and was going to remove it as I thought it seemed silly after the fact, but woman liked the addition. I suppose the idea of kickstabbing someone appealed to her. She was quite odd, this maybe vampire lady. Even had pet honey badger, but not normal size honey badger. Must have been the size of a horse. Well, okay, no, I exaggerate. Size of large dog, still big. Now one problem with the metal was no matter how many things I tried, I could not get the paint or any kind of color to stick to it. So it had to stay silver, which did not make for a very pretty design. So what I do is I add fur similar in color to that of the Great Canadian Terror Claw. I also made leg armor mostly from colored leather, but with plating of the durable metal underneath the legging for extra protection. 
I still think the suit was lacking color, but woman was pleased with it, so that's that. She claimed she was going to use it to slay a deathproof laser tail. I don't know if she can do, maybe with the combination of this suit and her maybe vampire powers she can, but I suppose only time will tell. The main takeaway from the project for me though was that part of her payment was to give me the remaining materials of the terror claw. This proved to be very useful in future projects. Last material I work with was quite a beautiful one and quite bizarre as well. The man who brought it to me claimed it was a special kind of crystal that the reclusive group of monks used to make their weapons. This man had found massive crystal and wanted whole suit made from it. I said ok, he's pretty looking, he's fairly durable, why not? What I did not expect was how inherently magical this crystal was. When I tried using spell on it, it began floating around the room. Surprisingly, I'm not exaggerating this time, it really happened. I think these monks must have some kind of magic in their own right that works in tandem with these crystals, would explain why they make their weapons from it. Speaking of which, the weapon I was able to make was a beautiful glowing double-sided blade that shone like star in night sky. When forged into blade, this material for some reason became incredibly hot and did not cool down. I had to mitigate this somewhat in the armor to ensure it did not become too hot for men to wear. Cooking customers in their clothes is not on my agenda, bad for business. The suit did end up still being quite warm, but coincidentally the men who commissioned it live in cold mountainous climate, so all worked out for him and I could pretend I knew that and did it on purpose. Also, because of inherent magical properties of blade, with the right spell I was able to throw blade like boomerang and have it come back to me. Was incredible! I tried to teach customer how to do and uh, he not do so well. When he throw blade did not come back and instead chopped down tree that fell on my brother Voslo. The tree did not hurt him, but angry squirrel from tree bit him and the bite got infected. He was in bed for a few days, but was fine after that though he does still have mild fear of squirrels. I like them though, they're like little furry tree thieves. Someday I will try training some to watch for incoming bandits to my village. Anyway, I told man he can learn to do blade throw with enough practice. I tell him that anyone can learn magic, but you need open mindset and the ability to put brain in the right vibration. Man simply did not have this skill yet. He says no, that like monks who use these crystals, I must have special cell in my body that allows me to use this magical force. He says that is the only way to be born with it. I did not correct him, but no, he is wrong. Anyone can do with enough practice. Regardless, man enjoyed the armor, even though he could not use its inherently magical properties. Yet. I have faith, he'll figure it out. Anyway, it's almost closing time, no more time for stories. Today, that is. So if you want armor, let me know. If not, feel free to come back for more stories anyway. I'm always feeling chatty. If you were a vampire, you will legally have to tell me <laughs> you were a vampire. <laughs> she says, I don't think that's true. <laughs> I'm so stupid. <laughs> she even had some very pointy sharp teeth like vampire. So I ask her, are you vampire? <laughs> she says, no. I say you know if you're a vampire, legally you have to tell. <laughs> I tell you though, when small man asks for small suit, this is man I like. Very confident. Sometimes I give discount, but most times no. <laughs> <laughs> Did I laugh too soon? Okay, gonna try that again. I like them though. They're like lethal 43 thieves. <laughs> too ridiculous. And there we go, we've got a second Fantasy Knights episode, or Fantasy Armor episode. Although I guess technically I have done three episodes in this series, sort of, because a long time ago I remembered while I was drawing the Energon Knight that I've done a Transformers Fantasy Knights episode, but I don't think there is any story or lore in that, and it's not part of this series, so it doesn't, it doesn't really count. But as I said at the beginning, give me more suggestions for what else you'd like to see turned into Fantasy Armors or Knights. Super excited to see what you all suggest, and of course, if you're new to the channel, make sure to check out the first episode in this series, doing Earth, Wind, Fire, and Water as Fantasy Knights, or maybe you want to check out my Mech Armor episodes. 
That's got a different goofy kind of narrator in it. Good old Benny Sharp. But besides that, that's all for today, except of course for ending this video on some kind of positive or uplifting note, which is that when you're in a time of confusion or fear, just try to do your best to laugh through the confusion. Know that you may not get an opportunity to understand everything that's happening, so just try to laugh through it, enjoy yourself while you're in it, and know that all the pieces eventually will fall into place. I hope that's helpful to someone out there. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next episode on Monday. Goodbye.